Hey guys, today we've got Doug Steves on the uh, phone and we're going to talk about uh, the importance of maintenance, his journey in the uh, turf industry, and uh, a little bit about the uh, power brooms he sells. So uh, Doug, how's it going? Hey Nick, it's going well. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about your journey in artificial turf and how you got started in things. Sure. Well, um, so in late 99, early 2000, I was looking to make a career change and uh, was always an entrepreneur as a kid and young adult and grew up with a father that was the same. Um, so I wanted to do something that was kind of in the golf related business. So uh, found the synthetic golf green business by way of uh, Golf Digest magazine and a small classified ad. <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, so started researching the industry and, and uh, just kind of jumped in and been doing it ever since. So, we're, you know, we still have a design build, you know, synthetic turf company, but um, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of how I got my start in the, in the turf industry. Okay. That's cool. I find, I find the, uh, I like the golf, uh, the golf stuff too. I find a, a lot of satisfaction afterwards and whenever the whole family gets out there and plays on the, the golf green and can really enjoy it. I, I really, yeah, that's, that's neat. It is. It's like you said, it's very rewarding. I mean, everything we do, sure. It's rewarding. We're always improving the look of people's faces, whether it's the artificial grass, you know, or a mini, mini sports field or a putting green, but yeah, my, my, my true roots are, are always uh, cemented in golf, just the design portion of it. Uh, and fortunately I, I don't have to build them anymore, although I do kind of miss that aspect of it. Uh, <laughs> don't have quite the satisfaction of uh, of looking at a project we've sold if I haven't had a hand in building it. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, it's still, it's still uh, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning, as they say. Awesome. Awesome. So um, it's kind of, it's kind of funny how the, how the turf industry is. It's a really small community and um, how, I guess how I, I got to, uh, to your business or, you know, your other one called us power brooms is uh i've been installing artificial turf uh you know for 16 years but the past probably two to three years people have been asking me what are things that i could do to make my life a lot easier on the artificial turf and in florida it's those little berries that drop off the palm trees that drives people absolutely nuts <laughs> and so um i've sold you know a few to the people in florida and then my mom has artificial turf and it was the um it was the pine needles that uh -huh. drove her crazy she's in new mexico and so we purchased the uh, 502 and we also purchased one for my grandmother she has turf and she has acorns uh, yes. so, yeah so it's it's you know your products are awesome because it doesn't disturb the infill and it makes it look great and I don't know. I just tell me a little bit about your products. I mean, you can tell way better than I can. So tell me about, about your power brooms. Sure. Well, you, yeah, you did a great job starting it off. Um, and yeah, I, that's what kind of led me to that segment of the business is yes, for all the years we've been installing, we've always had our customers with a lot of the same issues, pine, pine needles, especially when it comes to putting greens, but yes, the acorns and all the small little things that fall off trees that get down into the turf, which a blower sometimes just doesn't get. Um, so I was always having customers ask me what they could, what they could get. And we never really had a great answer for them. And then just, yes, one day I happened upon our manufacturer's website and immediately, uh, had that aha moment, just like I did when I found the turf <laughs> industry. Right. Uh, um, and so, yeah, jumped on the phone and finally didn't have us distribution. So here we are with that, but, uh, yeah, the machine. So we obviously did, you know, we, we got the models over, we did some really extensive testing ourselves first, just to make sure, you know, that they worked and they worked as advertised and they did. Um, so we kind of got off to the races and, and yeah, they've, they've been hugely successful for all different kinds of applications. We've sold probably a power room to, to every application of turf that you can think of. Um, dog, dog daycare facilities is probably our largest, uh, commercial okay. customer it does an amazing job for picking up the dog hair oh um, okay and, and the dog daycare facilities have to do that they have to power room uh because if they don't and get up that dog hair it'll block the drainage mm, that's you know what that's a good that's a good point and matter of fact i had a dog daycare that i had to uh 
oh, they were using some other kind of solution, right? And so I was telling about OxyTurf. And yes. <laughs> it's crazy because I try to tell people about it all the time because I've used so many other different cleaners. And it always seems like it masks the smell. Yes. And so whenever I use OxyTurf, it actually, I had a, a video of it actually foaming, right? And it foams. I, I put it real heavy around each post. So, because, you know, that's where the dogs really urinate. And sure. so, and it just foams, right? And so she was asking me um, about, is there a broom for the dog hair? And I was actually going to talk to you about that. So I'm glad you're saying it here on the interview because um, you're going to have a couple more power brooms sold after we get off because they're going to want to uh, purchase those. It's So it's good to know that it really does well with the uh, dog hair. Yeah, it's that really, we, we really didn't expect that. Uh, to happen. That was kind of a happy accident. And, you know, luckily, you know, it's the beautiful thing about social media is one dog facility that's, uh, you know, that's a, a commercial a franchise. Mm -hmm. and we've got locations all across the country. One of their owners bought it and made a post in their private Facebook group. And the next morning we woke up and we'd sold 30 of them overnight. <laughs> uh, I love it. And, then it. and it just continued to grow and grow from there. So, yeah, we, um, we're in with a couple of the national uh, pet daycare facilities uh, that are franchised, but, you know, just the homeowners that have dogs, um, and like you mentioned, the acorns, the pine needles, just about every, any place you are in this country, there mm -hmm. is some type of a tree that drops something that's a nuisance, and it's, and the leaf blower doesn't get. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, like and doesn't, then doesn't disturb the infill, because, yeah, it doesn't use suction. Uh-huh, and, you know, as an installer, I, I guess one thing that gets me is, You'll go to, you know, like say there's a putting green that's been installed for <clears throat> five to ten years. And they're like, yeah, just it, it, it looks really weird, funky around the holes. And, you know, you go up there and you're like, oh, I know what they do. They take the blower. Instead of picking the trash up out of the cup, <laughs> they just blow the tar out of it around the around the cup. And while all the infill gets displaced. Sure. And so, yeah. I mean, y'all's brooms, like, it fixes that. It does. It does. They, uh, you know, we like we've done testing with. I mean, it, it, it'll pick. It'll actually pick up golf balls. It's that strong. So. It, oh no, kidding! So, yeah, I've tried. Wow. Tried just for some demo purposes. I'm like, let's see how strong this is. And so yeah, threw down a hand, handful of golf balls. And you know, this is one of the videos that's on our Instagram page. You, know, you can see it just picking picking the golf ball right up. Picks up. It'll pick up a golf ball in terms of its weight. Yeah, it picks up pine cones, pine you know acorns. And, and, you know, the little, little, tiny little petals that are on like this, the, the real little small evergreen bushes mm -hmm. um, that really kind of coat the turf. Uh -huh. It does take a couple, couple passes to get them all up. But, yeah, I mean, that we've had some great testimonials uh, that we've had some great customers shared with us, you know, that they were so happy that it worked as well as they thought it and hoped it would. And, you know, really for them, it was kind of life changing. So it was really that was also very gratifying to be able to provide a product to someone that's going to help maintain uh, their expensive installation, whether it's a you know lawn or a putting green. And, Absolutely. You know, get, the, get the most years out of it that they can. Yeah. So the ones that I've purchased and used are, or is the uh, 502. Now I noticed you have a newer one, the three, is it 302? 302. So we have, yes, three models in total. And the, the 502 is definitely the, the best seller. It's, it's the biggest one, the strongest one. Um, and most people that get turf and want a power room gather, yeah, it's usually, well, I don't say usually, but uh, on average, you know, anything over 700 square feet, people should really get the, the 502 just because of the size. Okay. But there's a lot of folks that have smaller spaces that still want the luxury of the 502 in terms of it having a collection basket on the back mm -hmm. so you, you don't have to blow it all into a corner and then pick it up by hand the 302 works exactly like the 502 it's it's really just a smaller version okay. and it actually has a pistol grip you know kind of a handlebar so you can you know do it one-handed uh -huh. uh, so for those people that have a little bit of a smaller space or a little bit of a smaller budget so we offer the 302 um, and that's been pretty well received, definitely not selling as many as the 502s. Um, and then, you know, the other one is the 141. The 141 kind of, I call it, a, it looks like kind of a mini Shindawa. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, you know, it looks like a weed eater with a brush on the end of it. And that machine does a really great job for 
very small areas. Uh, we've had a lot of installation companies start to use them for indoor, um, you know, fluffing up fringe, fluffing up um, anything that's, you know, needed for indoor, but also sometimes guys just like to use that instead of the steel uh, for, for fluffing up fringe and or putting an infill in the fringe. Um, but the, probably the biggest use for it is, again, I equate it to a lawnmower versus a, and a string trimmer. Mm -hmm. Like when you, use, when you use the 502 machine, the brush is inside inside the wheels. So you can't get right up next to a tree. You can't get necessarily right up next to the fence. Right. Okay. Just, just like a lawnmower. So for those people who want to get every single you know blade of grass cleaned and fluffed up, um, many people buy both. They buy the 141 and the 502. Okay. All right. So on the so if we have any you know we have some installers that uh, listen to this and one of the things that fascinated me was I seen you doing an install with a putting green, uh, putting the infill inside the putting green. So yes. tell us a little about that. Like what machine did you use and all that? Sure. Yeah. At first I was, you know, a little hesitant to try it with installs, but after talking with our manufacturer and, and learning, you know, these are sold worldwide and one of their biggest distributors in South Africa uses nothing but the 502 for their installations. Um, so we had a, um, we first tried it on an indoor green that we had, a commercial indoor green, and it really worked incredibly well. So yes, when we tried it on the outdoor green, which was that might have been the video that you saw, we did mm -hmm. it right next right next to the steel. Um, they were side by side. And yes, the 502 is smaller, but when you look at the quality of the job the machine is doing in terms of actually getting all the sand down into the putting turf. Uh -huh. The, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. I mean, you yeah. can see in the video that the, the 502 definitely puts it down into the turf better. Um, yeah, I was I was really shocked, honestly. So you know we're so we've had yes we've you know we've had some guys that that called uh, some installers and want to use it on their installation crew and and you can certainly do that. We just tell people you know it you know it, it is a small electric motor, so it's really only rated for about three thousand square feet in a single use. Okay. Um, you know, and then after about 3,000 square feet of use, you know, probably just want to let the motor cool down for half an hour or so, give it a rest. Okay. Um, but yeah, those who want to actually use it for putting an infill in lawn turf, all you've got to do is take the collection basket off. We slap a couple pieces of duct tape on the rear door just so the sand doesn't kick it open. Mm -hmm. So again, it works just like a rear a rear bagger for a lawnmower. And awesome. And taking the basket off and then, yeah, just... Again, just going over it and it puts the infill right down in the grass or the putting turf. It works really well. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's good to know because, um, you know, like there's some places like in Naples, Florida, they're starting to try to outlaw um, gas powered uh, equipment such as lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, etc. cetera. So sure. I, think you're, I think you're ahead of the game on that. I really do. Well, thanks. I know it's coming in California too. Um, okay. So yeah, getting rid of the fossil fuels and the mowers. Um, I believe it might be 2025. Don't quote me on that, but I have heard that that is also coming to California. So, yeah, we we are you know continually looking to add you know some um, some different types of machines. We we're working on a gas powered one right now that uh, that our manufacturer is offering, um, but that's still kind of in the works in terms of the shipping, you know, and all that kind of <laughs> yeah. log logistical works in terms of getting machines all around the country. But yeah, there's a huge, huge demand for, for maintenance. Um, you know, obviously when, as, as you probably well know, when you got back in the business, it was all kind of touted as maintenance free back in the day. Oh yeah. Set it and forget it. The old Ronco style. <laughs> you got it. But as we know, anything that's going to be outside and the elements, in any part of the country for an extended period of time needs a little TLC to keep it looking good. And, you know, like it did the day you got it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and one thing that I kind of tell my customers is this is investment. It's just kind of like um, when you buy a car, right? You get insurance to protect your investment. Mm -hmm. um, this is no different, right? You're going to, you want to buy a maintenance package or you want to buy something to help the longevity of your turf. And uh, I think your machine and then also the OxyTurf, I think it's like, what, the one-two punch, man. It it helps it both. 
Uh, I couldn't 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 agree more. Yeah, the Oxy Turf is really an amazing product, and yes, we we do sell a lot of both of those products together in tandem on our website. You know, someone will come there looking for the Oxy and see our power room, and vice versa. <laughs> right. Uh, so it, it is a nice sympathetical relationship. Absolutely. That's, uh, so is there? I use, that, I use that analogy all the time with my customers. You mentioned about a car. Uh -huh. You know, I. I so we, you know, we either give these to our customers uh, that we do installations for or offer them, you know, a deep discount depending on the project. And I tell, you know, people, the always the question is, well, how often should I do it? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, you know, obviously as needed, but it's all the old adage is kind of like washing, when you wash your car. When right. You only wash your car once a quarter, you know, running it through the car wash real quick isn't going to do the job, you know, to get it clean. Yeah, you're gonna have to spend more and more and more time cleaning it to, to get it clean instead of if you washed it once a week or twice a month. Agreed. So the same is same is true with power rooms and turf, right? But if you do it weekly or, or bi monthly, uh, it only it only takes you depending upon the size of the space, of course, a fraction of, of, of amount of time. But if you wait three years and then say, "Oh my gosh, why does my artificial grass look so terrible?" Because nothing was done to it for three years. <laughs> You know, so You're exactly right. You got exactly. to clean it as you go. Absolutely. You know, and, and people's yard is the largest room of their house. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the thing, right? And I think uh, I had a lot of commercial business before COVID. And when COVID happened, I lost a lot of commercial business, but then I gained back my residential. And uh, okay. I think that I just, I really haven't eased off the throttle on the residential and to be honest with you, I kind of enjoy it more because you get to see the family's faces, you know, like you actually see people enjoying it. Sure. And I think yeah. that's, uh, I like that part of it. It is. Like you said, it, it's, it's very re rewarding. I came out of the automotive repair aftermarket business, okay. um, which, you know, different, you know, something everyone needs, but, but not something everyone wants to spend money on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I a grudge purchase so no one was ever really jumping up and down you know when they got their their car back with a great great job um <laughs> unlike, unlike when they come home and they see their putting green you know it's a whole different experience yes absolutely uh is there anything that you think of that um maybe anything negative with the power broom that you can think of that or something that that happens with the power broom that you can tell people hey if you buy one don't do this or do that because it might hurt the product or sure that's a good question actually um we do we do tell people you know especially if there is a dog involved or multiple dogs um and especially if it's a commercial facility you know it's electric so you can turn it upside down you can turn it on side there's no fluids to worry about you know leaking out or anything turn it over and just again kind of like you would with your vacuum cleaner anybody who out there who's got dogs in their home and they especially like us golden retrievers and you vacuum your carpet. You got to flip the head vacuum over once in a while and take some scissors and cut cut out the, all the fur and the hair and the junk from the beater brush. And and the power broom is really the same way. Uh -huh. um, kind of like the kind of like the steel power broom, as I'm sure you've noticed. You know, after you do a few installations, if you don't take a few minutes to kind of get out some of the the cuttings and the, oh yeah, the, the little black the, strands, the urethane strands that kind of wrap around it. Yeah. You know, any any tool that's used on a regular basis needs just just like the turf it needs a little light maintenance just blow it off turn it upside down with the blower and just kind of blow off underneath it um you know just you know, if there's any you know obviously don't keep it in the rain it's electric uh things you know the bearings and things can rust on it stuff mm -hmm. like that but the only negative that we have found is is people that have deep deep you know the, the deep sand fill type putting green uh, uh -huh. polypropylene slit film polygreen yep um got to be a little careful with those just because that type of a putting green is so sensitive um in terms of the infill layer um the tips of the fibers things like that so that's the only product that i tell people kind of tread a little lightly on okay um but you know nylon putting greens and um you know the taller type nylon putting green uh, or taller type twisted poly type putting greens that take you know a little bit more infill all of those are, are typically fine um, okay uh, you might get just a, you know, just a, just a very baby small handful of infill that comes out of it. And all you got to do is just kind of you know, shake out the debris and just kind of toss it back in the green. It's just a very, very trace amount. Wow. Um, 
other than that, no, that we've had we've had great success. We've been selling them for almost three three years now, and I think we've got almost close to over three thousand of them sold. Um, That's awesome, and it just continues to grow and grow every day. So yeah, they've um, they've they've been proven, and and we're super happy with the with the durability and the the staying power of them. Good, good. Well, Doug, I really appreciate your time this evening. And, oh, thank uh, you for having me on. Thank yeah, you. and uh, let us know if we can help you, and uh, I'll uh, get it out there and uh, tell everybody to go to uspowerbroom.com to pick up one of these bad boys. Awesome, Nick. Well, thanks so much, and if I can just throw it out there too real quick, if anyone out there is, is looking to be a reseller of them, we do have a great affiliate program, which is all that information is on our website as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So everybody go to uspowerbroom.com and uh, check out and uh, – Give Doug a holler and buy one of these bad boys. Thanks again, Doug. I appreciate it. Hey, Nick. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. You do the same. All right. Bye.